A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. The scientific process is long and challenging for the same reasons it works as well as it does. Scientists question and experiment relentlessly to gather data and evidence. Throughout 2020, we've had front row access to their tireless work as they've battled a devastating pandemic. In today's talk from 2018, Astronomer Phil Plate reminds us how science even progresses through a robust amount of making and correcting errors. Science is a process. It's a way of thinking. Gathering facts is just a piece of it, but it's not the goal. The ultimate goal of science is to understand objective reality the best way we know how, and that's based on evidence. Now, the problem here is that people are flawed. We can be fooled. We're really good at fooling ourselves. And so baked into this process is a way of minimizing our own bias. If you want to do some science, what you want to do is you want to observe something. Say, the sky is blue. Hey, I wonder why. You question it. The next thing you do is you come up with an idea that may explain it, a hypothesis. Well, you know what? Oceans are blue. Maybe the sky is reflecting the colors from the ocean. Great but now you have to test it, so you predict what that might mean. Your prediction would be, well, if the sky is reflecting the ocean color, it'll be bluer on the coasts than it will be in the middle of the country. Okay, that's fair enough, but you got to test that prediction. So you get on a plane, you leave uh, Denver on a nice gray day, you fly to LA, you look up, and the sky is gloriously blue. Hooray, your thesis is proven. But is it really? No. You've made one observation. You need to think about your hypothesis, think about how to test it, and do more than just one. Maybe you could go to a different part of the country or a different part of the year and see what the weather's like then. Another good idea is to talk to other people. They have different ideas, different perspectives, and they can help you. This is what we call peer review. Now, what happens if your hypothesis does a decent job, but not a perfect job? Well, that's okay, because what you can do is you can modify a little bit and then go through this whole process again. Make predictions, test them, and do that. And as you do that over and over again, you will hone this idea. And if it gets good enough, it may be accepted by the scientific community, at least provisionally, as a good explanation of what's going on, at least until a better idea or some contradictory evidence comes along. One of science's weaknesses is that it's done by people, and we bring a lot of baggage along with us when we investigate things. We are egotistical, we are stubborn, we're superstitious, we're tribal, we're humans. These are all human traits, and scientists are humans. And so we have to be aware of that when we're, when we're uh, studying science and when we're trying to, to develop our, our theses. But part of this whole thing, Part of the scientific process, part of the scientific method, is admitting when you're wrong. I know, I've been there. Scientists don't love being wrong, but we love puzzles. And the universe is the biggest puzzle of them all. Now, having said that, if you have a piece and it doesn't fit, no matter how you move it, jamming it in harder isn't going to help. There are going to be a time where you have to let go of your idea if you want to understand the bigger picture. The price of doing science is admitting when you're wrong, but the payoff is the best there is, knowledge and understanding. And I can give you a thousand examples of this in science, but there's one I really like. When you look at the sun, it seems special. It is the brightest object in the sky. But having studied astronomy, physics, chemistry, thermodynamics for centuries, we learned something very important about it. It's not that special. It's a star just like millions of other stars. But that raises an interesting question. If the sun is a star and the sun has planets, do these other stars have planets? In 1991, a couple of astronomers, uh, uh, Alexander Lynn, uh, Andrew Lynn, pardon me, and Matthew Bales, had a huge announcement. They had found a planet orbiting another star. After they made the announcement, a bunch of other astronomers commented on it, and so they went back and looked at their data and realized they had made a very embarrassing mistake. 
they had not accounted for some very subtle characteristics of the Earth's motion around the sun, which affected how they measured this planet going around the pulsar. And it turns out that when they did account for it correctly, poof, their planet disappeared. Wasn't real. So Andrew Lynn had a very formidable task. He had to admit this. So in 1992, at the American Astronomical Society meeting, which is one of the largest gatherings of astronomers on the planet, he stood up and announced that he had made a mistake and that the planet did not exist. And what happened next? Oh, I love this. What happened next was wonderful. He got an ovation. The astronomers. weren't angry at him. They didn't want to chastise him. They praised him for his honesty and his integrity. I love that. Scientists are people, <laughs> and it gets better. Lin steps off the podium. The next guy to come up is a man named Alexander Volshan. He takes the microphone and says, "Yeah, so Lin's team didn't find a pulsar planet, but my team found not just one, but two planets orbiting a different pulsar. We knew about the problem that Lin had. We checked for it, and yeah, ours are real. And it turns out he was right. At that point, the floodgates were open. Uh, in 1995." A planet was found around a star more like the sun, and then we found another and another. We kept getting better at it. We started finding them by the bucket load. We started finding thousands of them. We built observatories specifically designed to look for them, and now we know of thousands of them. We even know of planetary systems. This is incredible. Think about that. For all of human history, you could count all the known planets in the universe on two hands: nine, eight. Nine, eight, eight. <laughs> eh. But now we know they're everywhere. Every star, for every star you see in the sky, there could be three, five, ten planets. The sky is filled with them. We think that planets may outnumber stars in the galaxy. This is a profound statement, and it was made because of science. And it wasn't made just because of science and the observatories and the data. It was made because of the scientists who built the observatories, who took the data, who made the mistakes and admit, admitted them, and then let other science, scientists build on their mistakes so that they could do what they do and figure out where our place is in the universe. <laughs> That is how you find the truth. Science is at its best when it dares to be human. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Boulder, Colorado. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Boulder. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Phil's talk and more at ted.com/tedxshorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.